Welcome to another episode of the Cryptocurrency Weekly Review Show. Let's get straight into it. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another weekly review show. This is your first time here. Please think about subscribing to the channel. Your subscription is extremely important to us. I hope you liked today's video. If you do, hit the like button. And I'd also love to know what you think of the show in the comments section below. So let's dive straight in to the markets. So as you can see, red day, red, red, red. Although last hour or so, we're beginning to see some green. We have a market cap of just over $100 billion, down 3.06% on yesterday. Now this is a new website I've been using, Coin Paprika, and to me, this is streets ahead of Coin Market Cap. It looks great and it is full of features. I love it. I've been using it a few weeks now. I like this all-time high thing. It gives you. It's full of information. You know, little things like this, where the click of a button, you can find out information such as Bitcoin's all-time high when it was, how many days ago, the percentage from that all time high. And then if you wanna actually get some more detail on a Pacific coin, there's your hourly values, your 24 hour values, week, month, year. And it will tell you the best exchange where the biggest volume is. Full of graphs, year to dates, quarterlies, 30 day graphs. It's just a brilliant website. I love using it. If you don't like the dark mode, I prefer the dark mode, but there is an option. Day mode. But I actually think that the dark mode looks a bit better. So yeah, the Bitcoin dominance is 55% at the moment. Our market cap is just over a hundred billion dollars, which takes us up to CCN which is obviously talking about the risks of us dipping below this $100 billion market cap. We've lost $15 billion this week alone. And so it goes on to state that major cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple XRP have performed poorly against the US dollar, experiencing losses above the 10% mark. Ethereum has been the worst performing of more than 13% wiped, dropping from $98 to $84. The article also goes on to state that Bitcoin is at risk of dropping to $2,700. And this is primarily due to the lack of volume in most Bitcoin markets. So I came across this article a few days ago and I thought it might be useful to some of you. It's CCN's updated list of companies that accept Bitcoin. And to be quite honest, this list is growing bigger and bigger. It has a wide range of different websites from overstock.com, your general merchandise sites, computer related sites, web services such as Namecheap, which I've used a lot in the past, Pure VPN, which I still use, travel services, food, And it goes on to talk about purse.io, which enables you to buy something from Amazon using Bitcoin. So an interesting article I thought that would be useful to some of you guys. So as usual, a lot of negativity in the news this week. The Crypto Globe is reporting on Bitcoin scammers email bomb threats causing havoc across the US. So if you haven't already seen this or heard about this, Scammers have been sending bomb threats demanding Bitcoin to certain businesses and companies throughout the US. And it's caused a lot of panic and distress for people, not to mention the amount of resources that are used to check out all these hoaxes because they haven't actually found any explosive devices yet. Now, one thing that annoyed me about this, they refer to these guys as scammers. And to be quite honest, they're not scammers. They might be attempting a scam, but they're terrorists. 
and they should be treated as such. And when and if they're apprehended, they should be charged with terror-related offences and not scamming or fraud offences. And I think if you find some of these guys, lock them up, throw away the key, we wouldn't see too many more attempts at extorting Bitcoin in this way. So Crypto News Review is reporting about the Bitcoin investor who lost access to his $170,000 worth of Bitcoin because he fucked up his backup. A man is offering a sizable reward to get his Bitcoin back as he loses access to his $170,000 investment. A Turkish Bitcoin investor has found himself locked out of his cryptocurrency wallet after failing to back it up properly. And the article goes on to state, to cut a long story short, the problem arose when he bought a new iMac and then eventually decided he wanted to return it. With just four hours left in his right to return, he rushed back to the Apple store, but the problem was he'd left his blockchain wallet on the new machine. Furthermore, he used an auto-generated Apple password with no iCloud backup. And realizing what he'd done, no backup made, he rushed back to the store, only to be told the item was already on its way back to China and the entire machine had been wiped clean. Thus, he knows he has his wallet, he knows what it is, he has no way of accessing it. And it's estimated a brute force attack would take a hundred years to complete. As you might imagine, the response from the community hasn't been particularly helpful. Uh, with one Reddit poster going on to say, thanks for reducing the supply and making our Bitcoins more valuable. So the lesson is make sure back up your wallets, back up your wallets, back up your wallets. So let's get a bit of positivity going here. Now is the best opportunity of the year to buy Bitcoin. And this is from the international rating agency, Vice Ratings. And they're recommending it as the best time of the year to buy it because it is the least speculative investment. Now, funnily enough, this agency has been critical in the past of BTC and has often sent out mixed messages surrounding cryptocurrencies in general. But now they're saying it is here to stay and this is the time to get in. And their tweet goes on to state, BTC is getting to such low levels that it is becoming one of the best buying opportunities of the year. As a store of value, Bitcoin is here to stay. We truly think it is the least speculative investment a person can make in crypto right now. So some positive news and more positive news. Major US cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase adds cash withdrawals to PayPal. Now, this is not the first time these two have tried to merge. They did try uh, in 2016, but their integration was subsequently terminated due to technical difficulties. But from now on, Coinbase's United States-based customers are able to withdraw their cash balances to PayPal. The services for other countries will be reportedly rolled out sometime next year. So this is a huge development in my opinion. Nearly everybody has a PayPal account now and this will make it a lot easier for more people to come into the space. More positive news. The EU definitely seems to be um, embracing cryptocurrencies at the moment. There's a lot of positivity and positive developments in the EU and the EU Commission. European Central Bank has granted a banking license to Revolut, which is the provider of a mobile finance app that offers cryptocurrency trading. The firm announced on Thursday that the new license will ultimately allow it to offer users an account to manage all their finances from a single place through its upcoming Venture Revolut Bank. Now, I've used Revolut in the past to access my cryptocurrencies and allow me to use them for day-to-day -day spending. Never had an issue with them. Their card works absolutely perfectly. So Eric Finman has been in the news this week on a couple of different news outlets. And if you don't know who Eric Finman is, he's one of the youngest cryptocurrency success stories for the last year or so. 
So Eric, so Eric Finman became a millionaire in his teens by investing money that his grandmother had gifted him starting as early as 2011. At the height of the Bitcoin bull market of 2017, Finman's stack was worth an impressive 4 million US dollars, although there's no indication to suggest how much he still holds. But despite his success, Finman is now of the opinion that Bitcoin is in trouble and has recently stated Bitcoin is dead. It's too fragmented, there's tons of infighting. I just don't think it will last. He also stated it may have a bull market or two left in it, but long term it's dead. The article goes on to state that bizarrely the teenager investor believes that Bitcoin Cash is actually a better option, stating that it is a great technology, but it has been marketed extremely poorly. Now the article doesn't paint a particularly good picture of Finman, simply suggesting that he's not been paying enough attention to the space, which is perfectly understandable considering his age, but it's odd that he thinks he has any authority on the matter, given how detached his statements are from reality. And the CoinShark website goes on to state that Finman has actually contradicted himself by stating, personally, I think Bitcoin is going to be worth a couple of hundred thousand to a million dollars. So some contradictions there, but Finman's foresight has to be commended. And not everybody is losing money. South Korea's biggest cryptocurrency exchange saw 171x rise in profits this year. BitThumb, South Korea's largest cryptocurrency exchange that processes fiat to cryptocurrency traders, has seen a 171-fold increase in its profits in 2017 compared to 2016. A report, a public report released by the company, revealed that BitThumb holds more than six billion US dollars on behalf of its users. So it seems the safe money at the moment is in cryptocurrency exchanges, although there is a huge amount of them coming out at the moment. And so that takes us up to something I spoke about in a previous video. This is a project called Nova Chain. I'm not going to go into too much today, but the arbitraging bot, which is the Rex bot, I started off using it this week. We started off with $2,000. I'm going to see how it progresses over the next six months or so. I'll do a weekly update on it. Arbitraging is something that I really believe in. And I think now is the perfect time to put this bot to the test. So I'll do a five minute update once a week. I'll have a totally different section just for the Nova Chain bot. You can check in there and see how it's doing. I'm very positive about this. I'm sure it's going to make cash. The only thing that I do question is, how much is it going to actually make and how much the fees are going to take out of that at the end of six months. So I reset it two days ago and our $2,000 investment has made $21 in the last 48 hours. But since I put the two grand in, we're up to 48. So that was like a week ago, but I did mess about with things. So it wasn't running completely correctly for the whole week. And so finally, I just wanted to highlight the hypocritical approach that the major banks and the central banks in particular take towards their own banking sector, their own banking sector and the cryptocurrency sector. So this is an article I found on btcmanager.com and it essentially talks about how the Dutch central bank is keen to regulate the cryptocurrency companies to deter money laundering which is absolutely hilarious. The Dutch banking authority noted that having a license can help stop instances of money laundering via the cryptocurrency industry. Cryptocurrency companies need to report any suspicious transactions and undergo clear know your customer checks to qualify for a license. The Dutch central bank will continue to monitor the situation, which is fantastic for everybody in the cryptocurrency sector but perhaps they should clean their own house first before looking at us. There was very little made of this fine Dutch bank 
ING was fined $900 million recently. Why? They failed to stop money laundering or they turned a blind eye to it. And turning a blind eye to it wouldn't be the first time the banks have allowed money laundering to go undetected. I think it's funny that central banks are just jumping at every opportunity to put the boot in at cryptocurrencies when in reality it is their own institutions that are far more corrupted and need to get their houses in order. So that was a look at some of the stories making the headlines this week. To be quite honest with you, I just skimmed the surface. There is an enormous amount of news articles coming out daily. Some positive, but the majority of them are quite negative. I may have to actually make this a bi-weekly show. That about wraps it up for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'd love to know what you think of some of these stories. Let me know in the comments box below. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you again soon.